Hello, little stinkers. Uh, welcome. <laughs> to <the> first day. <laughs> hey, we're sticking with it until someone. It, it's up to you, you guys, to think of something better if you don't want to be a little stinker. Otherwise, that's what you're going to be. <laughs> um, so this is our regular Thursday question and answer on the Facebook group. If you're watching this in the replay and YouTube, there'll be a link to join the Facebook group so you can join in from next week. Um, and if you're in the Facebook group, get your questions. I'm Pam Duffy. That's Starla. Um, <laughs> we're part of the E-Rank team and we're hopefully here to answer any of your E-Rank or Etsy SEO type questions. Awesome, guys. I hope everybody's having a good week. I wasn't here last week because we were helping uh, my husband's grandma move some stuff, but hopefully you had some fun with the very, very elusive Anthony Wolf, who very seldom is able to make it, but he took some time out of his day to hang out with you guys last week. I actually didn't get to watch last week's Q&A. So did anything, anything interesting happen? <laughs> on the replay we discovered that anthony can or you can screen share while i'm hosting the stream so that was kind of good so he was able to show us all the new things that are turning up in e-rank so if you haven't seen that guys you want to check it out he's given us some sneak peeks of some of the new things although we might have had some more new things added this week has anyone spotted them <laughs> I have it. <laughs> <laughs> have, a look at your dashboard. have a look at your dashboard. You should see something there. <laughs> oh wait, wait. I might. I, never mind. I might know what you're talking about now. <laughs> hold on. Shh, hold on, guys. You haven't asked any questions yet, anyway. So, um, something that I did want to bring up, Pam. You just did a video on it, so maybe maybe this would be a good thing for for you to chat about. But Etsy uh, swiftly changed some of their policies to try to stop counterfeit items which you know that's that's a good thing i'm all for it but it, it's a little confusing and i wish they would have uh, elaborated more pam did you want to describe um, that a little bit i can do a little bit um i have actually been in chat with etsy trying to get some better answers oh, from them um, I've gone up the food chain about three times and now everyone's saying they can't answer and they're going to send me on to someone from the legal team to find out. But what Etsy's done in the prohibited items um, policy, they changed it about a week ago. They didn't really let anyone know. And the thing that they've changed, or the only thing that I can spot, is they are talking about, I can't remember the exact wording because Stella just sprung, <laughs> I should have been prepared, but it's on repurposing goods. So potentially on people who are, for instance, re repainting um, Converse, Converse shoes or something. It's to do with the branding, if you could be confusing the logo, if people might think these are actual converse shoes so i've i've spoke to etsy about what it is and we don't know yet so if you sell any kind of upcycled luxury things with their logo on it check with etsy if you can sell them just now yeah That's and that makes sense because i see people who who get the like louis vuitton fabric and you know that it's not actually louis vuitton but then they just print their own things or they make their their own products and i can see how a big brand might get a little concerned that that their products and that their brand is being misused so i get it and and overall this is a good thing um it, it's confusing for the for the smaller sellers but in terms of them trying to nail down like actual uh counterfeit items i mean we see Every once in a while, we see those shops that pop up, and you can just tell that they're selling things that aren't aren't real. They've got like Nikes and stuff listed, and yes, yeah. I mean, definitely, that's always been against the rules. Where it's getting a bit more dodgy is the people who buy Nikes and stick diamantes on them in a pattern or something. You know, whether that's allowed or not. And it seems I've just been diving into that just now. There's a court case going on. It's all being sorted out. So I think Etsy preemptively freaked out and sneaked these words in to cover its back if the court case goes the wrong way, is my thoughts on it. But I will like, this is why I've not posted in the group yet, because I was just waiting for the actual answer 
from Eatsy because we do prefer to give you actual advice instead of hints and <laughs> superstitions. <Hi guys>. <laughs> <laughs> The policy change is absolutely important and you want to check it out, but I can't tell you what's affected because it's very fuzzy. Um, All right. There's lots of could words in there rather than... <laughs> and I, I went ahead and linked Pam's video if you guys just want to go and watch that and uh, get a, a, a you know brief rundown of, of what's going on. I think that normally when we record a video, it's a lot easier for us to articulate out, you know, what we're, what we're saying. And then when we're live, it's like, uh, so check out, check out the video. Um, and if you have any questions over the next few weeks, we will do our best to try to keep you guys updated during our Q and A sections, Se sessions, sections, sessions, Q and A yeah, sessions. sessions. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so we don't have any questions yet. So make sure that you get those in. I see 22 of you live. And I know at least one of you has a burning E-rank or Etsy or SEO related question that we can answer for you. So get those into the chat. Um, in the meantime, make sure that you also subscribe to Pam's channel, which is linked down below. She is going to be going live on Sunday. Hi, yes. what, what are what are you up? To? You did you were continuing puffin last oh, puffin. weekend, right? Puffin's done. Um, puffin's done. Oh, he's, he's so done. cute. He's what's crazy. been what's on the agenda for this week? I think um, the kit's not in yet, but it should be the three little pigs this week. <laughs> all three, all three of the little pigs. We'll see. <laughs> it depends how long these things take. It's it's, it's life crafting. <laughs> I love how you shoved your arm like you wanted to be seen. <laughs> He's so lonely. My water boy. <laughs> Bless. And um, <laughs> I will be I will be going live tomorrow because we will be introducing a brand new Etsy shop that I've created from scratch after being a seller for, for nine years. So we're going to mainly use this shop to run tests and experiments and try things. But obviously, if you want to shop from it, you totally can, uh, especially if you're a part of our handmade alpha community, which is my community. So you can find me on YouTube at Starla Moore, and we will be talking about what we're doing um, more tomorrow during the Friday Bean. So, all right, looks like we've got some questions from Luna. Let's see, uh, hello everyone, Pamela and Starla. What are your thoughts on why Etsy has stopped registrations of sellers from PayPal only countries? They claim it's temporary, but where do you think it's going? I haven't heard that, have you heard that? I just heard it in basically in comments to my video that you just linked. Yeah. People put that and they said that's like it's all connected. I'm like, it's not. It's a different thing that I've just <laughs> looked into. Um, but there's very little information on this as well. But I'm sort of not surprised. Um, Etsy has always wanted to move us all over onto Etsy payments because they get the money that way. Um, so I would imagine they've stopped the registration from PayPal only countries because they're planning to do something with sorting out Etsy payments, whatever it's called, but Etsy payments in those countries. But I haven't been able to find anything, but I don't think there's any kind of weird conspiracy or something. They'll just be working on the back end and how to do the, the computery stuff of that. Got it. Yeah, guys. I mean, Etsy is going to try to keep everything in house. They're, they're going to do their best to try to keep all of their services in house. And I mean, that's a big brand move. You know, that's, that's what big brands do. They don't rely on other services. And this is something that I, now that, now that you've described it, Pam, I, I, I'm not surprised by this, even the slightest. So um, it makes total sense to me. I would say that if you're running a business, it might be best to not rely on PayPal only anyway. Um, you know, it's, yeah, 
So, yeah, it's difficult because some countries they haven't had the option of ETSI payments yet. Um, but I don't think it's affecting established sellers. It's just affecting new people signing up just now. So I think we'll see a change in the next couple of weeks. Um, but keep an eye out. Got it. <laughs> All right. Sharon said, I seem to ask the same old questions time and time again. My issue stays the same. Rubbish keywords and tags and very few views, which drop uh, to zero after a month or so. I'm fed up with asking. Sorry. Uh, I've had no sales over a month, having had a great January and February. That's normal, Sharon. Right now, nobody's making sales. It is the biggest issue that we've seen both in, in support and in the Etsy forums and in every single Etsy group. People aren't buying right now because the pandemic is coming to a close. Um, we're seeing you know, more people getting outside as uh, quarantine restrictions are being lifted in certain areas. I know here in the United States, as long as social distancing is enforced and masks are being worn, we're allowed to go do what we want. Places are, are you know, doing their best to keep people distance. But in most cases, we've got all, all the same festivals and, and music festivals and things are starting to get planned out that we couldn't do last year. So we're resuming normal activity. And it's so common, this, this lull in sales is so common that we see it across all industries, not just Etsy. And I know that it can be discouraging, but you've got to try to push through this, this lull and get yourself through the next few months because we're all going to feel it. You're not alone. And, and that's really all we can tell you is that you're not on your own. You can see the evidence of it. If you look anywhere where Etsy sellers are communing, they're all talking about it, but we can sit and we can twiddle our thumbs and we can complain about the lack of sales and, and feel really bad about ourselves, or we can begin working on our shops and trying to fix the problems that you've stated about, you know, bad keywords uh, and, and things that drop to zero after a month or so. Those, those to me are fleeting keywords and little keyword trends that are, you know, maybe not keywords that are going to support the longevity of your brand. I think Sharon, one of the things that would be very, very beneficial to you at this point after, you know, just kind of getting to know you and answering a lot of your questions. I think that what you should focus on over the next few months is target market research. I think that right now your, your area that you should really put some time into is learning more about who exactly your customer is. I, I want you to think about uh, where, what websites do they hang out on? What do they do that is unrelated to your, your product? Uh, what is their home like? What is their income tier? Roughly how old are they? And really try to flush out these, these little details and help to build this, this almost atmosphere around the type of person that you want to cater to. Because I promise you, once you know exactly who that person is, then it's going to be a lot easier to try to find the keywords that you might have not thought of before. Um, you can do this by looking at, you know, Instagram profiles, I think is a really great way to do it. Start looking at, you know, someone who could accurately depict, you know, one of your target customers and look at the things that they post. What are they doing? Where are they hanging out? Are they going to the beach? Are they are they hiking? Are they sitting at a coffee shop? What are the things that really appeal to them and their psychology? And how can you market to them? How can you use keywords that they might be searching for? So I know that that's a lot to digest, but just for now, write down on a piece of paper, target market research, and then hop on YouTube over the next few months and just dive in like feet first. And, and start fleshing out these details because it's going to help you a lot. And I think that it's the, one of the first steps that any brand should take before they even develop a product. So. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I would say to everybody, if you're seeing a dip, what, what I see a lot of people doing, especially if you say you've had a good couple of months and, oh no, it's gone terrible, is not to panic and change all your keywords and everything. They might not be bad. It might just be quiet it is just quiet we all want to sit and think of what's the thing i can do right now to get the sales now and quite often 
you can't if there's nobody shopping you know starla says america's almost back to normal in the uk it's going to be quiet because since christmas everything's been shut our shops are open now people can go to shops for the first time in five months they're not going to be online shopping that's just the how it is um the other thing totally you're your market research, fantastic thing, because that helps you know how to brand everything. A quiet period over summer is a really good time to learn about photography as well. Photographs are so important. And if you can combine that with your knowing that your 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 market, the per people you're marketing to look like this and behave like this, it gives you an idea of what kind of photographs they would appe that would appeal to them and then learn how to do that kind of photograph. Yeah, and she had said other competitors of mine are still selling, but you don't know if they're selling, maybe they're selling way less and you're just seeing that they're making sales, but that could be, you know, far below what they're used to. And they might be panicking because despite the fact that they're making sales, the sales that they're making might be way less than what they would normally make during a busy season. So like I said, it, it, this is this is a universal thing. And even if some of your competitors are selling, they might be funneling that traffic from social media. They they could be sending out emails to a you know 20,000 member email list. You never know where that traffic is coming from, but I wouldn't focus too much on your competitors. What I would look at is the grand scale of things and i promise pam and i aren't lying to you when we say that things on etsy are slow right now because we're seeing it with thousands and thousands and thousands of people every single day so um and and, and like we've said in the past this is just normal for the season but it's especially intensified right now with you know covid restrictions being lifted and, and like pam said people have been stuck in their houses for so long they just want to get outside and and go to a real store so absolutely also when you're saying competitors in january and february in the christmas were they making similar levels of sales than you you know if you're looking at the superstar if if you said well you can't copy starla you can't follow starla as a competitor because she's not opened her shop just now but if you were following starla she's not your competitor or you know someone like starla they're like they, they are superstars. They're way ahead of you. So they can keep a level of sales going through the year because they've got return customers. People who bought from, been buying from them for years are buying for like the birthdays and stuff. But that's a quieter market, you know. So you will get the superstars will still be making sales. But I bet you they're making less sales. Um, even even though my shop does really well i know for sure that 75 80 percent of the money i make will be in the final three months of the year every single time that's that's how my shop goes so i don't i don't expect to make much money just now i don't i don't rely on it anything's a bonus yeah um laura had said can we ask e rank platform questions here that yeah yeah <laughs> Please do, yes. <laughs> um, and, and then one last little thing to to uh, point out here from, from Sharon, because I like to keep the topics kind of grouped. She had said, I have daughters buying for their moms, husbands buying for their wives, middle-aged ladies treating themselves or a friend. It doesn't seem to be one particular type of person. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if a lot of people are buying your products. What you want to do is narrow down on one of those types of people. By doing that, you're not alienating the rest. For example... Um, my husband has a couple like plushy stuffed animals that he loves and they're like little dragons and, and they're cute the, from the brand Squishable. I don't know if you guys know that brand, but they're cute little, just little fluffy little stuffed animals and they have dragons and little goofy characters. But he's not their primary target market. They don't think of him when they're making their cute little happy ads. They're probably thinking of teenage girls or, or children when they're making those ads, but it doesn't alienate him. He's not like, Ooh, disgusting. I will never, you know, he, he is okay with how they've positioned themselves. Same with when I'm shopping for a new pair of Nikes, I don't look like those fitness models that are out running and, and you're terrible, Michael Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm five foot two. I'm I'm like up to his ankles. So I'm not I'm not 
looking at their branding and saying, oh, I don't look like that, so I can't shop there. I'm looking at a brand that is, they know exactly who their target customer is, and I'm aspiring to be that. So just narrow down on one of them, whichever one you think is the, that you see the most of, uh, you know, narrow down on middle-aged ladies treating themselves. And maybe that husband who's buying for his middle-aged wife will say, I want to treat my wife who looks like the women that are depicted in this shop's marketing. And then you're still going to appeal to that target market. So that's what I would do. Yeah, the magic word is aspirational. It's those lifestyle photos are not for what you look like. Starla doesn't look like Michael Jordan, but she buys the Nike and she's not even going to run in them probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> she's not even going to run in them, but she buys them because she wants to feel a little bit like that lifestyle. Sporty, you know? Yeah, we pretend we're sporty when they're <laughs> not even going to cross the front door we're we're sitting we're sitting watching movies and eating popcorn in our sporty clothes <laughs> oh, Sharon said I can't lie I don't think Mark of being in the market for cute squishies Mark is oh he is all about cute stuffed animals and cute little animals I get at least like 10 uh photos in my inbox of just cute little animals that he sent me pictures of so <laughs> All right. Martin says, does it make sense as an EU seller to dismiss the U.S. free shipping? Do you think as well uh, or do you think it will be useful to focus on nearby countries due to the, I guess, persistent local preferring algorithm changes? If you can't offer free shipping, then don't worry about it. I when I mean, when I was when my shop was open, I was only doing free shipping for for local orders. But ultimately, Etsy isn't doing this prioritization of shops that sh ship free. I think they were going to. But if you search for anything on Etsy right now, you're not going to only see on the first page items that ship free. So that's evidence right there that they're not only putting free shipping products first. What it is going to do is it's going to affect those shoppers who are filtering buy free shipping, but shoppers are smart enough to know that somebody's paying for shipping and it's likely them because the shipping's looped into the product. The customers aren't dumb. If we know these things, then they know these things. So yeah. I filter for free shipping on eBay. I don't on Etsy. Yes. <laughs> it's different things. Exactly. And that's what I wish the director, the CEO of Etsy realized that we're, we're not Amazon, we're not eBay. <laughs> Etsy's different. Yeah. And, and I think that, I think that, you know, not all, but there are a lot of shoppers on Etsy who know what Etsy's all about. Every once in a while, we have those people who are confused, bumbling around thinking that they're on Amazon and they think that they can, you know, push and manipulate the sellers. Um, but there are more people I feel that are shopping on Etsy that they know. They know that we're people. I, I've got people who I'll offer a coupon code to and, and they'll say, no, I want to pay you full price because you're the artist. And the, I mean, I, I try to think of Etsy as a, you know, as a platform for people who respect my products and, and me as the artisan. Um, obviously, we all have encounters with those those people who are just nightmare customers, but I don't think that that's a majority. So. No, most are lovely and most realize that that's the draw is you're buying from the artist. Yeah. Um, Laura said, I noticed that the search trends tab does not show in keyword lists. I often have to click on each keyword on the list to see the trends. I think it may be more useful than the flags and notes tab. Not sure. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, I will mention it again to the team, but I, I have mentioned it. <laughs> I have asked for it a few times, but I'll ask for it again. <laughs> ask ask for it again and tell Anthony that someone in the group is asking for it. Yeah, um, everyone in chat, let, let's people power. If you fancy in the keyword lists to see the search trend um, little graph in there, let us know. Um, I, Anthony's probably going to kill me and tell me that it's like super difficult to do. Yeah. But let us know if that's what you want to see in the keyword lists. <laughs> Let's see. Martin said, we are everywhere up. Today feels like pre-Christmas even, but we send worldwide and we are on four platforms, own website included. That's fantastic. I am so happy to hear that. It, 
it's not putting all your eggs in one basket. It's having multiple income streams. That's really the way to do it. And, and I talk about that all the time. Um, you know, not only relying on, on the one thing, because sometimes you're going to have a crap day on the one thing, but then the other thing is going to do really well and it evens itself out. So most sellers that you see on Etsy who, you know, talk about having a sustainable income with their handmade product. Yeah. A couple of them are 100% Etsy, but most of them have another website or they sell on handmade at Amazon, or maybe they've got a YouTube channel with monetization or, you know, this and that they've got, they've got multiple avenues. So that's great. Absolutely. It's a great idea to diversify and it doesn't like, I thought about diversifying on other sites to sell my stuff, but that just means keeps means like me having to do more work. <laughs> it's hard to figure out every other platform. So for me, diversifying meant to do different things. Um, it meant that before I even started selling on Etsy, I, I'd figured that out. Um, many entrepreneurs think of themselves as entrepreneurs rather than Etsy sellers or owning that business. You do several things. Um, when I started out as self-employed, I was a driving instructor and that's actually very seasonal because people are wanting to learn to drive more in the summer and they're a little drunk more at Christmas. So <laughs> that's, where, <laughs> that's where I jumped into selling on Etsy because those two things balanced each other up while one was down, the other was up. Um, so it's a good way to look at what you can diversify and you can diversify, as Starla said, YouTube. You can do YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, all these things you can get paid for. for Amazon doing affiliate your links. Yeah, Amazon affiliate links. These are um, That's a really good way if you use, like so many people complain when someone comes to them and says, where do you get your supplies from? Oh no, they're trying to rip off my supplies. Well, no, the person you buy your supplies from is a business owner too, and they would appreciate you sending fabric. You fabric sending customers. I'm thinking that they would appreciate you sending customers. So if someone comes to you and says, "Where do you get your wonderful fabric from?" You have an affiliate link. You can link to that shop. The shop pays you for sending people there, but you're only sending people that were to things that you believe in anyway. So you become an influencer. You become an expert on your thing. Yeah, that kind of stuff. It supports the person that you get your raw materials from, which is great. It gets you money and it helps other people. So, yeah, there's loads of different ways to make money still being creative without just selling on Etsy. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think that I've got like six six little revenue streams and some of them don't bring in a lot. You know, they, they only bring in a small trickle. But when you collect them all together and you look at how much you have at the end of the day, when you stack them all up, it, it makes a significant difference. So don't, don't, you know, shy away from these things that might make you a, a couple dollars here and there, because, you know, maybe somebody will come along and say, Hey, where do you get your, your printer? Where do you get your label printer? That's a great opportunity to hurry up and make an Amazon affiliate link. So check out their partner center. Yeah. Um, it's Amazon affiliate is fantastic because see, like your ads, you complain. Um, the offsite, well, the there's the little cookie attached to the ad. If someone clicks on your ad, that it's like thirty days if they buy, it's considered it's come through the ad. It works the other way with Amazon affiliate. If someone clicks on your affiliate link and you've linked them to a brooch pin or something that was twenty cents. And they go on and go, oh, I was going to buy a tally and I was going to buy this. Now, you get a commission from all of that, not just the thing you link to. So, yeah, Amazon's pretty cool. I really have to focus on that a bit more. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't done nearly enough with it, but I donate all the money. And I think that that might be one of the things where I haven't. That's why I haven't paid attention to it, but I need to. Um, all right. Ben said a client of mine made two orders separately, then contacted me saying that the second order is a mistake and he asked for a full refund. I made a full refund, but I still see the order on the orders and shipping page. I can see that it says fully refunded, but why is it still there? Should I cancel it to disappear or should I wait for it to disappear? It won't disappear unless you cancel it. So <laughs> you refund and then you cancel. Um, oh, I can't remember. Etsy had made the process easier. Um, I 
think I've only had to cancel one since they changed it. I think you can now just cancel and it says, do you want to refund them? Whereas before you had to refund, it was a whole process. Um, but yes, you do have to cancel it. And even then it will take a little while to disappear. It doesn't go immediately. I'm not sure why, but yeah. yeah. Don't feel bad though, because uh, the first time I had to do it, I went bonkers, like, ah, it's not there. They still want me to ship it. What do I do? And I was I was very frustrated. <laughs> All right. Sharon said, uh, re free shipping. Do either of you have any advice on whether to do lower product price plus paid shipping or price included shipping cost and say free shipping if uh, you know what I mean? Um, I'm a big fan of do whatever you want to do because Etsy isn't going to, they, they try to bully us into offering free shipping, but if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. So you could either test it and see what works better, or you can do what you're most comfortable with, which is what I would recommend. Yeah. Do what works for you. Um, some people have said they've tested it and free shipping did the opposite of helping other people it's worked for them. I think a, just about a year before Etsy did she, free shipping, I'd set up free shipping over £100 because I figured if someone's paying £100, I want to do something. I don't do any discount codes or anything. That's all they get. And then Etsy said there's free shipping over $35. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, they don't deserve that. So. <laughs> I am tight with my money there. Um, and also, I, could, I couldn't be bothered with the faff of increasing all my prices and trying to roll all that in. So never did it. Um, some people do. It works for them. Some people don't. That also works for them. There's no right answer to that one. Yeah, I did it. But my packages, uh, they cost me like $2.60 to ship. So I offered free shipping. But my products were relatively expensive and it's like they didn't even nobody even noticed that there was two dollars added to it yeah. you know so it wasn't that big a deal for my product but you know for somebody who's selling i don't know sticker sheets that are only a dollar each and you have to add five dollars in shipping then yeah it might look a little little wonky so yes it does depend like really high-end items really expensive items people probably expect shipping included I would never call it free shipping. We all know there's no such thing. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, but also watch out um, for for those in the US that don't know, um, shipping to the US for the rest of us kind of doubled in the past year. So that makes a huge difference. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Bernadette, looks like Father's Day is beginning to trend. I posted about 10 listings a few weeks ago, sadly, when no one was searching, as pointed out by Pam. So should I copy them and relist them in an attempt to get a wee boost? Um, I would say no. Check and see, are you ranking in search? Are you in the right place already? If no one's looking yet, it just might be, it's just not quite there yet. Yeah, you know, it. I, I know you're trying to, to kind of ride that, that little engagement boost. And I get that, you know, because Etsy gives us that initial boost. But at the same time, it takes like 60 to 90 days for you to be fully indexed. And it sounds like you're right at that 60 to, to 90 day mark. Um, maybe take one of those listings if you have stock behind them. Take one of them and duplicate it. And, and see how it goes. Rather than doing all 10 of those listings, try it with one and see how it goes. I, I wouldn't, I mean, it sounds like you already did a lot of work there and you might be accumulating a bit of a, a quality score um, just depending on how people are engaging with that listing. It, it's really hard to tell. Unfortunately, this is another one of those cases where we can like speculate and say maybe this, maybe that, but you're never going to know until you test. So the only thing that I can offer advice on here is to not um, not make a bold move without just testing one listing first and, and see how it yeah. goes. You decide. The, the 10 might be in a good place. There's just no one quite there yet. I'm not sure when Father's Day is. Um, but I, yeah, I would totally go with if you can make a couple more listings and 
drip drip them out and see if you get any traction. Yeah. But um, I want to roll in for Father's Day. It's it's like good if you can catch it, but people are really rubbish to their fathers. It, it's nowhere near as big as Mother's Day. Yeah. And um, what was it? I think that most sales on for Mother's Day products are made in May, the same month as Mother's Day. And products that are bought for Father's Day are bought a month early. And that just kind of shows you how much how, how much, you know, planning goes into people shopping for their moms versus people shopping for their dads. I'm, I'm seeing like, like husbands scrambling to get their, their wives mother's day gifts, like right before mother's day. And then, yeah. Oh, it's pretty, yeah. That, that always used to be a joke thing that like Christmas Eve was the day that dads went to buy their wives presents. <laughs> All right, let's see. Laura says, in terms of shop pages, I like the new way the photos are displayed at the bottom of the shop page. Is it possible for the top 100 listings to be shown below the photos instead of having to click a separate listing tab and copying and pasting the shop name? Um, okay, that's only rank we're talking about. Um, yeah. What in terms of shop Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to picture what what tool you're in there. Um, I yeah. Well, I'd just be going to the shop name. Um, like going from the super spy tool into somebody's into somebody's shop, and that'll show. I haven't looked at that for a little while, so I don't know what it looks like. Um, yeah. This but might be one that you might want to maybe like type out with screenshots and, and send to the email that way or, or post it in the group and tag Anthony or that way it can be brought to his attention. Yep. Yeah, just sitting here. I can't picture it. Um, I would usually pull up things to look at them, but yes, screenshots would very much help. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Um, she had said similar to the way top 100 listings are displayed for keyword tool searches. Hmm. Yeah, feel free to grab us a, uh, a screenshot. Sharon said, huh, Amazon affiliate? Yes, Google Amazon Partner Center and pretty much any product that is sold on Amazon, you can get an affiliate. Ooh, St Stella ran away. I don't know what happened there, but what she was saying, the Amazon affiliate program, it runs in Amazon UK, yeah, amazon.co.uk, amazon.com, all sorts of places. You need to generally have some kind of social media. You need to be accept accepted into it. So you'll need to have a blog or a group or something for them to accept it. But just look at their terms and everything, join into it. Um, I think we've got Starla coming back. <laughs> here she comes um but yeah it's definitely worth looking into um even if you're not if you don't have a big enough following for it just now it's something to build up to in future it's handy um they've been sending me some cool emails i got deals for my affiliates for Amazon videos a couple of weeks ago. So you just get a little Amazon code that you can bung into any of your posts. And if anyone clicks on it, you get a few quid bunged your way, which is kind of nice. Oh, we have Starla, but no voice. <laughs> no voice. Ah. <laughs> Technology's wonderful, people. <laughs> here, here. Oh, here we go. I think that's working. Am I back? You're back. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Just in time for Linda. Linda said, uh, does Etsy factor in categories into your shop when people are searching or are they simply to help visitors find items once they land in your shop? If you add an item to more than one category, they charge you as if it were a new listing. Not happy about that. Wait, if you... Oh, shop, do you mean shop sections rather than categories? Yeah, shop sections. Yeah. Um, so Etsy tells us 
that they do factor in the keywords that you use in your shop categories. Um, it It's one of those things where if you can optimize it, I mean, it's easy. It's usually easy enough to optimize them because you're describing exactly what's in those shop sections. Um, I would definitely try to do it. Just don't, don't, break your back trying to because nobody's going to search for something and then get your shop section. Um, but if you add an item to more than one category, you can't add an item to more than one category without duplicating the listing. And then it is a new listing. Yep. Pretty much. That's it. Um, I would say your shop, your sections can worry about them more in how that they can help your buyer be able to find things that's really what they're there to be able to sort out your shop so if somebody finds some earrings or something and they want to see if you have similar necklaces or they want to look at all your other earrings they can just click on that that section that's mainly what they're there for i don't think i've ever had a person find me through a category through a section sorry categories yes sections no <laughs> All right. Sharon said, uh, will your products not look more competitively priced on the face of it in among your competitors if you don't bump up the pricing with the free uh, with the free shipping? That's what I'm thinking. I am so against competitive pricing when it comes to selling on Etsy. Compete in everything other than pricing. Don't I I, I mean obviously if if you know, every single person in your industry, even people who don't sell on Etsy, like if you make sterling silver necklaces and you're charging above Tiffany and co, you might want to uh, look into, you know, defining why and justifying why your products are priced that high. But other than that, pricing is not one of those things that I think you should try to match, you know, no. competitively. Don't waste it. Sharon, you try, you're trying to sell, sell sh stylish jewelry. So if you saw a listing come up for Tiffany and a listing come up for Ratners, this is a UK one that people will know, and you saw the prices of them and you were wanting to buy a lovely gift for someone, you wouldn't go, oh, look, the Ratners one's a quarter of the price. You would go, yeah, the Ratners one's rubbish. <laughs> Um, shall we see if we can see, shall we see what we can afford from Tiffany because we know it's quality um, I was actually watching a video the other day that just I, I meant to save it someone was doing candle making kits and one of the kits was it was working out at I think it was like $80 to make two candles and me, I was like, no way. She was like, wow, what is it that makes it worth that? I have to buy this to see why it's worth that. And I was just watching that. I was like, that, that, that's, that's your branding thing. That's your, what people will think. If you are making luxury jewelry, don't race to be the cheapest. Because if you've got a full page of jewelry and you want to buy someone something lovely, people aren't going to look to buy the cheapest, depending on how much money they have, but it has been shown that a lot of, when people are quoting to find artists or businesses or things, they will tend to go for slightly above average at the least, or if they're a bit fancy, they'll go to the top, but they, they're not gonna buy from the bottom, not for quality work. Yeah, I always I always played this game where I would go and look at the, the competitors who were trying to like do what I did and then I would look at how they price their products and I would make sure that my products were 20 to $50 more expensive than their products. <laughs> Just, it's a power move, big power move. Really, it catches the eye. And not only that, you have to sell half as much as they do to make as much. So <laughs> you're, you're working less hard to make more money and you look, you look better, you look higher quality. Ready for my, my, my quote? My, 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 my Starla quote, it is easier to sell one $100 product than it is to sell $101 products. You need to know your worth when it comes to pricing. It's very, very important. Absolutely. We're not the warehouse. We're an artisan. We're an artist. It's a big difference. Laura said, is it true that Etsy does not consider product descriptions as a ranking factor? It is true. Um, Google does, but you're not going to rank on Google. 
I'm, I'm, I hate to be like, I all, I hate to be the downer. You're not going to, nobody likes on Google. Most of us definitely not, unless you're something very strange. I think some vintage shops with very niche items can rank, um, but otherwise, most of us know. Your description is for your customers. Yeah. That's I'm going to go ahead and throw in a, a blog post that I did a while back. I've also got a video on my channel. And uh, we know of seven factors that affect our rank on Etsy. There are more than seven factors, but there are only seven that Etsy will tell us. <laughs> and this entire article will talk about each of those seven factors. And these are the things that you can influence. These are the things that you can can work to improve in your shop and to make sure that you're you're doing these things to rank as high as you you possibly can. Um, so check out that if you want to know what does affect your rank and anything else that you hear about, like in the Etsy groups and forums and all of these little conspiracy theories, they're likely not true. So. Yeah, um, and Starla goes into good good detail explaining all of that, but the seven factors come from the Etsy handbook. She didn't just make it up. This comes directly from Etsy. Yeah. So um, that's what everybody should be doing, first of all. And if, if you haven't done it, do it. If you've already done it a few years ago, do it again while you're quiet. Read the Etsy Ultimate Guide. They they put out this article telling you what they're looking for. They're trying to help us. So read the Ultimate Guide. It's super important. Yeah. Stay, stay updated on that because... There's no, I can't remember everything that's in it. If I don't, if I don't brush up on it, you know, Pam, Absolutely. Pam gets questions. We get questions all the time that Pam knows the answer to. And I'm just like, uh, <laughs> cause I don't know. Yeah. I've got a weird brain for that kind of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Sharon said, I didn't mean pricing competitive or competitively. My prices are, uh, what they are as I use a strict pricing metric. What I mean is, say my price is $33, but I list it as $36 because I give the free shipping. Then my item will look artificially more expensive. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think that that little difference is going to, unless somebody's sitting and, and staring at your prices every single day until they notice that you increased your price by $3 and then they, and then they you know, yeah. are very upset by it. But that that's never going to happen. <laughs> they don't know your matrix anyway. Yeah. I mean, in the past, I think four or five years, I've doubled my prices um, because every time I get too busy and I freak out, I just put my prices up, up. And in that period of time of me doubling my prices, I've only had one person comment on it. So <laughs> that prices aren't a problem. 99% of the time, whatever people's issues are on Etsy, prices are not your problem. Yeah, my my, I priced some of my most elaborate pieces at like twenty dollars when I first started, and now my most elaborate pieces run from a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars. So, price for what you're worth, and don't worry about anybody stalking your prices or, or prices looking artificially inflated. They're inflated based on what they they don't know what the metric is exactly they don't know how much your materials cost they don't know how long it took you to make they don't know anything about you or your matrix it, they could just think i mean going up three pounds that's nothing that could just no. be your annual increase because everything else got a bit more expensive yeah. and if you're shipping jewelry for three pounds i'd possibly rethink that as well if you're shipping, if you're selling jewelry for thirty pounds, I think you can. You've got some wiggle room to put the prices up a bit. Oh yeah, because um, I'm cheap. I don't wear jewelry. I'm cheap, but I still think that's quite low for jewelry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Natasha says I want to start growing my own email list through Etsy with all the appropriate legal ways that I'm allowed to use. Would it seem professional to open just one, or just? one page site for the beginning you mean like a like a email opt-in page a landing like a, page yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah totally just just an email opt-in page um natasha i would recommend making sure that you read up on on gdpr it doesn't matter if you live in the U european union you still have to follow it uh make sure that you read up on the the can spam act 
and uh, there's a couple other email regulations. But uh, I personally use MailChimp. I don't teach that on my YouTube channel because of all the legalities. We keep that within Handmade Alpha Academy just because if somebody messes something up, I don't want them to sue me. But MailChimp has a YouTube channel that you can follow. And um, I, I believe that they have like full setup. Yeah, I totally. I did a Mailchimp video ages ago with whole loads of disclaimers of "don't follow me" kind of thing. Yeah. But the problem with anything, Mailchimp changes. So literally, I'd released the video and they changed how you did things within yep. two days of releasing the video. Um, I I don't even have a, a site. I don't have a landing page. Mailchimp did just it, it's just a pop up that just goes just links you into MailChimp um there is a way to do that because I did it but <laughs> yeah you can uh so MailChimp provides you with an EEP URL which is a sign up page that you can decorate and brand and make it look mm -hmm. however you want um if you've got a website or another page there are embed codes that you can use to uh to make a pop-up I, I don't know what you're referring to Pam but I don't think that it if, if it's something that actually pops up on screen, it might not be something that they're able to do with the GDPR regulations, because I haven't heard of that. Yeah, no, it, it's not a pop-up, but it, well, oh. it's just it's just a link to a sign-up. You don't have, yes. like lots of people will link to a website with ah. in it, whereas I just link to the sign-up. There's no page for Got them. Got it. Yeah. I have not used my email list as much as I, I don't even know how many people have actually signed up for it. <laughs> I can check that. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, Mailchimp takes care of everything for you. That's why it's my favorite. It's like a mostly drag and drop system. It's it's very easy to to use. Um, let's see, Kimberly. I have raised my prices for my jewelry by two dollars to slow sales a little. That was in January. Now I'm so busy. I raised my prices another two dollars, and after that, twelve sales. Uh, within the next two days people will buy if they want fyi i'm more busy now because i make specific graduation jewelry i'm also a homeschool mom of four so my time is very valuable you know what it sounds like it sounds like you need to raise your prices again <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> don't stop <Yeah>. now <laughs> yeah That's great though. two dollars for quality jewelry most people won't even notice that as a as a raise yeah, especially during graduation season, you take advantage of that. You, you raise that price. <laughs> Pam and Starla teach scalping prices. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep them that high. Don't don't just like raise them just to drop them. Just <laughs> make it a permanent raise in prices. Um, Sharon said, following a very interesting post uh, by someone on E Rank yesterday, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to try Fiverr for someone to help me with SEO for some of my listings. However. It is really hard to find someone who writes good English. The one person I found doesn't have any reviews yet, despite being on Fiverr since 2020. Any advice, please? I am so anti getting someone to do your SEO from Fiverr. That is so incredibly dangerous. It's, it's incredibly dangerous because if they specialize in these services, that means that they're working on other Etsy seller shops as well. And those are all connected to that person's IP address. So if one of these shops that they're also working on is selling Disney products and they, you know, get hit and their shop gets suspended. Every single shop connected to that Fiverr guy's IP is also going to get shut down in unison because Etsy is going to see that they're all linked to one IP address. So I would not recommend doing that. And if you do do that, absolutely don't work with anybody who has no reviews. Um, I, I, if I saw that they've since 2020 is not a long time. Fiverr has been established for a long time. If you're gonna if you're gonna go through with it, please find somebody who's been on the platform for at least like five years and who knows how to work on Etsy SEO because no no reviews and only been on since 2020. Anybody could do that. It, anybody can get on Fiverr and make a profile. Yeah. And that's Sharon, no you could literally start on Fiverr and start charging people right now if you wanted to. You could They're say that you're an SEO expert, Sharon, and and charge people right now, and they would give you access to their Etsy shops, and you could wreak havoc. That's how easy it is. Yeah. Um, with I'm with Starla, I wouldn't really advise. I've used Fiverr for amusingness for videos and stuff. I might actually do an SEO one that doesn't touch my shop just to show you how bad they are. Um, but 
you've got two options. Either it's a person who has no more experience than me or Starla or anybody else because there is nobody with more experience. We're all the same. We all get the info off of each C. Um, there, there's no any other expertise out there. Um, or you've got people who are going to try and be doing some dodgy stuff. Um, so you've got to really watch if the advice they're offering you sounds dodgy, double check, because they could get your shop shut down. That's yeah, and she said that, that they don't touch her shop. They send it in a Word doc and uh, you copy and paste it into your listings. But they, uh, nobody knows your brand better than you. Nobody knows your customers better than you. Do you think that this this guy that has never made jewelry is going to be able to to do your job better than you? Probably not. I I can almost bet that that my nine year old daughter would know more about jewelry than than the guy that you're thinking about hiring. And I, I would just be very careful. I mean, okay, if he's going to give you some idea of keywords, it's going to be no better than what people in the group or any other group can offer you, because he can't tell you what your what customers who search for that keywords are looking for. He can't tell you if people are going to click on your listings. Yeah, and that's why none of us really offer one to one advice because that kind of thing's not really possible. It's it's so difficult to do because. Every listing, every customer, every keyword is different. Yeah. There's no shortcuts, unfortunately. But like, if you if you want to pay someone a small amount of money to give you ideas of new keywords, okay. Um, but if anything sounds dodgy, don't do it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, Darcy said, I'm confused on how to build an email list from Etsy. I thought that was not allowed. It is allowed. What's not allowed is for you to go into your Etsy orders, get their email address and add it to your email list. What you can do is make a sign up link and put it in your listing photos. You can put it in your listing description. You can put it in your shop announcement. You can, after they place an order, say, thanks for your order. Uh, here's it. If you would like to sign up for my email list, you can get coupons for your next order. You can print it out on a uh, business card or on a little slip of paper and stick it into the orders when they ship. You are ab In fact, Etsy has an, uh, an article talking about how they encourage email lists and how they want us to have email lists and how to do it. So, yeah, you just can't sign people up without their permission because that's illegal <laughs> yeah yeah it's just that is where telling them go along to my sign up list to, my, to sign up my mailing list although it's illegal i was just thinking the other day i am getting a lot of emails from companies i did not sign up for <laughs> i would you should you should message them and ask them uh Ask them what information I'm here for GDPR purposes. What information do you have on me? How did I mean? Really, you you technically have the right to do that because I get emails like that too. Yeah, absolutely. But yes, n none of none of our E-rank people will be doing that for sure. It is against the law, so don't do it. Yes. All right, and uh, it looks like we're at the four o'clock mark, but I'll go ahead and answer our last question from Rachel because I think it's a very important one. She said, how does E-Rank get the info of how many searches each tag gets? Does Etsy release that information? The answer to that is no. Pam, would you like to talk about where we get our data? Our very amazing, very reliable, and uh, very accurate data? Sure, um, I'll do my best. Uh, what it is, um, we do the same method as what is industry, sta industry standard, the massive companies all do this. And this is, we we buy it from a third party that has permission that that gets that gets the data from real internet users. So it's not all the people searching on E-Rank, it's a subset of them, but Anthony worked really hard to make sure this was the best and most accurate data that he can find. Anthony's huge data nerd, really spent ages looking into this. So it's a company that tracks, into 
certain internet users that have agreed to this, a large panel of people tracking what they're searching for and what they're doing on Etsy. Um, and we've made sure it's a large enough panel that the data is statistically significant. So it's real results, but it's not real results from Etsy, which is why we say they are estimates because it's not the entire population if that makes sense it's yeah it's still it's good it's really useful data but it's an estimate and if something says like less than 20 or something it means we know people are searching but we don't quite know how much exactly and and you know this is what everybody does any any seo tool that you see out there these these websites don't give this information out etsy doesn't give it out uh i don't know very many sites that are going to give this information away. And uh, honestly, I, I assume that it's illegal for them to do so anyway, or, you know, maybe a breach of, of privacy. So um, yeah, there we work with millions and millions of people who have opted in to let <laughs> us uh, or let this, this particular data provider kind of look in on what they're searching for. And it's, it's such a large number that we are able to get these these really large data sets and usually what we see are, are very accurate results from these just like any other seo tool that you use on the web we're all doing the same thing because it's the only way to do it unfortunately so yeah but you can sort of check because etc releases okay like retrospectively in its quarterly report sometimes you'll see oh and this got high searches and i always go back and look and go yeah we said that too <laughs> Yeah, but you can always um, kind of double check. And she had the the last little bit. She had said, "Any idea how many searches a tag gets if it auto populates in the Etsy search bar?" That Etsy search bar is not telling you that people are searching for that term. I think that they're going. It, it, it doesn't. They call it suggestions. Yeah, it's to help the person searching. It's not telling you that anybody else has searched for it. It's the algorithm saying, "We think this is what you might be looking for." Right. We have products that are categorized as this. I would use it as an initial compass to get a couple ideas, and then take those ideas and put them into E-Rank because you can't see from that how many searches it gets, but E-Rank can. So if you get an auto suggestion that sounds good, take that auto suggestion and put it into E-Rank. That way you can see how good it is because, you know, Etsy, if you type in Christmas right now, they probably will give you a ton of great suggestions about Christmas products that are, that are for sale right now. Doesn't mean anybody's searching for it right now. So yeah we don't know the time period that they're looking at anything there but i know it's 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 given out seo advice all the time to use that and it's not it's not a bad idea to get because sometimes you can just get some ideas there but we don't know if anyone's searching for it how many people are searching for it and over what time period they're searching for it but we do know that on e-rank yeah all right, guys, it looks like we are at the end of questions at 4.04. So we only get four whoopings from Debbie today because we went four minutes over. So thank you guys for hanging out with us. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you check down in the description below for the link to the E-Rank group. That way you can join us live on Thursdays and ask your own questions. Uh, tomorrow, I will be going live on my YouTube channel. You can find it by searching Starla Moore on YouTube. And we'll be going live at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Pacific, talking about launching an Etsy shop from scratch or the, the new Etsy shop that I am launching from scratch after my business from of nine years hit some unfortunate uh, supplier issues. So we're going to be discussing what it's like starting a, a brand new Etsy shop from the ground up, which is what I'm going to do after this q and is over is finish that. Yeah. And then that everyone needs to check that out because you're always asking how to do the things starla's doing the things right now i am i'm marketing the things right now my my facebook page is just me marketing the things i haven't even revealed what the things are i just keep talking about that i'm launching the things but because of that i made an email list for the mysterious thing that i haven't revealed and we've got almost 500 people signed up just to know what the thing is yeah, so. teaming is the best. I remember years ago, I used to hand out flyers for a friend's club. And when we handed out the flyers, millions of them would get dropped on the floor. I turned them upside down and handed them the blank sheet. 
and much more people kept a hold of it because they had to turn it over and actually read it. <laughs> Mysterious. <laughs> Uh, yeah, people people love the the mystery. If you can tease like a new product line and just give them a little peek, but don't show them everything, that's really beneficial. Um, so Friday, you guys can have a date with me if you want to come hang out for a couple hours. And then Sunday, Pam is making three little pigs. What are you talking about on Sunday, Pam? Who knows? I have no idea. Whatever you ask me, you guys ask me stuff. I will talk about it. Either that or I'll babble nonsense about the weather and stuff, probably. You can find Pam's channel by searching Pam Duffy on YouTube. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. This has been great. Um, and yeah, we will see you next week, if not tomorrow and Sunday. <laughs> see you later.